In our previous episode, we took our boat, Elements of Life, from where she had been sitting in the workyard at Indian Town Marina for the past two years and finally moved her to the water. It's been our first time being wet in over eight years and we were overjoyed to see that she actually floated and that we didn't have to go back to the workyard anymore. Since then, progress has been a little bit slow, but we keep moving forward every day to try and get ourselves out of this marina and traveling around the globe once again. This week, we talk about why we've decided to leave our hull bare, try out the mainsail to see how she fits, and Matt goes over the option of our deck hardware to see what's going to work out best for us in the long run. So one of the things we were really surprised about in our last couple of videos, um, a comment that hadn't come up until the boat was basically about to go in the water is, why haven't you touched the hull? Are you still going to paint the hull? Um, your hull looks really dull. I don't think you made a wise decision in leaving your hull bare. So um, because I think we've spent a good couple of hours in comments trying to reply to these questions one by one, we want to just address it in a video because I know it's not a common thing here in the U.S. You do see it a lot more in Europe and other countries. Yeah, it's all over Europe. That boats go with a bear hull. So um, we are going to address why we've decided to go bear. And then we can link back to it whenever anyone asks. You <laughs> can just link to it. So if you and, ask in future yep, episodes, yep. we're just going to put you right back Forewarning here. Forewarning you, we're just going to link you back to this. Yep. And, yeah. So I'm going to let Matt uh, take it a little bit because he knows more about the metal hulls because this was his dream boat yeah. was to have a metal boat. Not my dream boat. My dream was to have a metal boat. Yeah, okay. This is not my dream boat. I <laughs> uh, love it, but whatever. Uh, so the hull is 5083 uh, aluminum, which is a marine grade aluminum. Typically, most people are used to dealing with a 6061. Uh, or 6063, which is an architectural grade, corrosion resistant architectural grade. Um, airplanes, totally different type of aluminum. Uh, they, they all have their traits, all have their weaknesses. The reason why boats typically use uh, 5000 series, so 5052, 50083, 5086, depending on where you are in the US or Europe, um, is because it, it doesn't corrode rapidly. Um, you can't say it's corrosion proof, just like stainless steel isn't uh, uh, rust proof. Um, biggest thing with it is because it forms an oxide layer um, over the aluminum, that's the protection. Um, that's actually what's protecting the underlying surface. So really on an uh, uh, aluminum boat that's built with one of the 5000 series aluminum, the only place that really has to be painted is under the water line. And the reason why that has to be painted is because oxygen can't get to it. Um, of course, it's under the water. Um, so it's it, oxygen starved at that point. And then that oxide layer cannot form. So anything above the water line can be left completely bare. We could leave the decks bare, cabin top, everything could be. And there's actually quite a few aluminum boats that are done that way, just for ease of maintenance. Um, one of the biggest benefits with doing it the way that we've done is, if, if you've seen, if you watch our other videos, how much time she spent trying to prep the surface for paint. I'm so sick of painting. Yeah. So sick. So you have to go through and you have to prep everything. Everything's got to be perfect on it to get the primer to stick. To it's about that oxide, ten layers overall. I'd say yeah, a primer. The top. So that oxide that is is wonderful for for uh, protecting against corrosion. Also prevents primer from really sticking from any paint surface from really sticking. So what you have to do is you have to eliminate that oxide layer. Um, we typically use chemicals or abrasion to eliminate that. And then you apply something directly, almost instantly, as fast as you possibly can to prevent that oxide layer from actually forming. Um, ours was built in Quebec. It was built by a work yard that typically produces work boats. So while ours was painted previously, which of the five boats that were produced, that we know of, that were produced in this series, ours was the only one that was painted. But it wasn't really fair. It, um, it looked pretty good, but it wasn't the fairest surface at all. So no matter what, it's going to look like a work boat. Um, so we figured, why 
have that issue, why have to worry about uh, the paint adhesion, um, paint flaking off, all those types of issues, her spending, I don't even know, it'd probably take us another year to paint the actual hall. Um, why worry about that when we can just take it all off and we actually have a better surface for that? Problem you have when you apply paint is if you get a scratch in the coating, um, that oxide layer can't form again because that paint is there it prevents the oxygen from actually getting to it so you can actually get more corrosion behind the paint um, uh, so it can be a problem with that too the other thing is we like the utilitarian aspect of it the fact that um, our first time docking it just two weeks ago now um, I wasn't worried about fenders. I didn't worry about anything. Scratches don't matter. It automatically heals itself um, uh, very, very quick. So there's none of that pretty paint to worry about. Also with that is we actually like the looks of it. We do. Um, it is one of those, I love the workboat look. Um, that, that for what everyone sees on the outside is this, this rough and tumble looking boat, this expedition looking boat type of thing. Um, it looks like you'd be in any dock anywhere, uh, in Panama or in the Arctic. Um, but on the inside, then it's nice and pretty. We got the pretty wood, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, the comforts, the warmth is inside, outside's cold and, and basic, and we like that look. We can go through and we can scotch bright it and we can make it really, really shiny. Problem is it's gonna instantly revert to a patina. It's gonna get that, that dull look to it. And there are products that you can apply to it. There's shark hide, nylic. There's there's some stuff that you can put over the top of it um, that prevents that from happening. But again, that same issue, it's a maintenance type of thing. You have to keep up on it. So bottom much. line is we like the way that it looks. It's going to darken. Yep. Um, what else was I gonna say? Uh, we don't like the aluminum shiny. Yeah, we don't want the aluminum shiny. No. <laughs> it's not just gonna like poof corrode everything on us. It's meant to handle these conditions. It's meant to be bare. And uh, Jess can can link uh, in the description. Area, description. Comments. She can link to our sister ship, um, which had just done very Northwest cool Passage. Boat, yeah. Very very cool. Um, they have just done a Northwest Passage, Greenland, Greenland Russia, Russia, now Japan. Japan. Um, uh, she can link to that so you can see kind of what it's going to look like uh but that's that is what it's designed to do it's supposed to be like that yeah and i know yeah, i'll like throw i've thrown a few pictures in this while we've been talking of the process of what she started out looking like to what we've done to her now and i know some of you will probably say but she looks so much better with the paint but we're happy with her the way she is so yeah we, we that's like what it. we like <laughs> so yeah. hopefully that has answered some of your questions one one of the other things too is is you know every anchorage you go to it's every boat's white every boat is is looks the same type of thing and that's kind of one of the fun things too is the fact it stands out a little bit it's a little bit different um even when you get to france i mean it's still it's a little different um so it becomes kind of one of those those character things that you can say if someone asks you which boat are you we, you don't have to say we're the, we're the saber or whatever and then you you we're, describe we're the white boat with the pacific blue canvas <laughs> yeah which everyone had um this way we can go to the aluminum boat oh yeah okay okay type of thing so it, it becomes a marker um for us too because we do love to stand out <laughs> so i hope that has answered some of your questions on why uh why we're staying bare why we're staying bare Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. With the boat now in the water, there are still a slew of projects to be done, and one of the many includes attaching our sails to see if they fit. Since we've never owned this boat while it has been in the water, we were only able to do a quick inspection of them just after our arrival to Indian Town laying them in the grass of the storage yard and trying to figure out which bundle was what and examine the material for tears and rips. Because there is a strict rule at the marina of not putting up sails on a boat while it is out of the water, that was as far as we could go in the process until now. Rummaging through the depths of our storage unit up the road, we peeked through every bag and bundle until we came across what looked like our mainsail and tossed it in the van to bring back to Elements and attach her for the first time. As we put her up for the moment, she will unfortunately not stay there for long. Bringing the mainsail out of the bag, our plan was just to raise her to see how she fit the boat and also so I can get the necessary measurements to build a stack pack in the next coming weeks.
not having attached a mainsail to any boat since we put our last boat, Serendipity, back together after stripping her clear to wait out Hurricane Sandy. We were surprised with the ease we fell into with no difficulty of finding all the right corners and sliding in the hanks. For us, it was just like riding a bike, a skill we learned which came back without a second thought on what to do. Getting all the hanks on and the lines in place, we raised the main to see elements of life become a sailboat once again. Although we didn't go through the trouble of installing battens, and realized the sail was actually made for a Pearson, it was deemed that this sail could get us through a few years of sailing without needing a replacement. Finally, a piece original to the boat we can actually use. Well, now one of the things we have to do is figure out how we're going to get the lines back to the cockpit. Um, originally, the way it was set up, we didn't have a dodger on the boat, so the winches were mounted way outboard. Now, if we were to put this winch here, of course we couldn't crank it. It's actually where the glass is going to be, where the plastic acrylic's going to be, um, would bisect this, and so we actually can't get access to it. So we need to bring that winch inboard. Uh, for the past two years, we've been looking at different options as to how we're going to lay this out. Uh, one of the solutions we came up with is to run the lines uh, across from this area down here, which is actually where the staysail is going to uh, sheet is going to attach. That goes up to an area across here. So it would look like this coming from here across, going up, and then back to this lock area, putting an organizer here, and then doing a 90 degree to the winch. Uh, fine if we're doing one or two. The problem comes when we are now having to run the main sheet, the vang, uh, the staysail, uh, each one of those, the traveler, each one of those having to come and do this 90 degree. Of course, when you do a 90 degree, it ends up putting a lot of stress on it. Uh, a lot of extra force and also we don't have a lot of real estate here so to put three clutches and the winch handle on a 90 degree to have it come this direction across here to the winch it just did not give us a lot of space so kind of scrap that idea the other option we came up with is again to come up over here do more of a conventional setup, have an organizer here, space over, and then oops, organizer here, and then have the line go back under the traveler base to a set of clutches again. Set of clutches to the winch. Problem as you can see, there isn't much space between the, the clutch and the winch. And there also isn't much space forward of the winch either. Um, what that's going to do is it makes the angle really odd coming off um, on the winch. And if we brought it further this direction, um, well actually on this side it would be further this way. But uh, uh, if we brought it further this direction for the uh, to, to lead better to the winch, all of a sudden the winch handle is going to impact this area. So again, a compromise issue. What we think we've come up with now is to scrap putting anything on the, the roof. Benefits that we have, uh, no bolts drilled through, so no potential leak points. And that's kind of the beauty of an aluminum boat is having typically having things welded on as opposed to um, bolted through, so then we don't have any leaks. What we think we're gonna do, we are gonna bolt, but uh, what we think we're gonna do is come from here, 
bring it down to a fair lead located in this position. And then another fair lead leaded back here, leading actually to the cockpit. So instead of coming up over the top of the cabin, it will come down, across, and back to a winch mounted here. Now what that's going to do, we'll be able to have the both winches right next to each other. We'll mount the clutches in this location right here. So it still allows you to easily reach it um, from inside the safety of the cockpit. But the biggest thing that's going to do too is now the helmsman, whoever's on the tiller, has access to everything. You have access to the sheets for the head sail, for the stay sill, for the main sheet, which will be on that side, the bang. All of those things are right in, easy reach of the helm. It clears up the clutter over the top of the cabin. So visually, we're able to see over the top of it easy. We don't have winches in the way. We don't have clutches in the way. We don't have anything else that's there. Um, it's just gonna clean up the cockpit, allow all the tails from the, the ropes will actually go right into the combing here. So we don't have that big bushel, uh, bushel of rope tails normally that are lying up there. So the stay cell sheet will end up coming through from this area, through a block here. I'm gonna end up attaching that different. Uh, and then we ended up ordering uh, Harkin uh, low friction rings. Uh, they're bolt down rings. So two of those will go here. So that will deflect the line and lead it further back leading it across this, uh, the cabin side to another set here, which will just hold it into place, keep it off the paint, uh, and allows a little bit less friction when it comes through. But with that low deflection that we have there, there should be very little friction in the system. And then it will lead to a bank of clutches, which will be angled to accept the line properly and come out the stern. And that will lead to another winch here. So then we'll have everything leading directly to this winch on this side, another one on that side, one of the Harkin crossover blocks. It uh, looks like a little mini winch. It'll sit right in this position. What that allows you to do is it allows you to 180 the line and just drop it over it, wrap it around, and then you can use this winch for anything that's coming off of this and it'll be the right angle for everything. So that gives us a lot of options all within this little bank area. It allows me to control everything when you're still using the tiller. Uh, you can reach over, grab everything. You're not having to step forward to the cabin top at all. Uh, it gives us a lot of options. It gets everything out and further back across here. Um, frees up the cabin top. Just it, it eliminates a lot of the issues. Gets um, rid of the holes in the top of the cabin uh, so we don't have to drill anything. Negatives with it. Now, everyone loves painting. <laughs> So the big issue now is we're, we're going to use this for a little bit before we end up doing this um, just to make sure that this is the way that it works best for us. But what we'll end up having to do now is cut the welds, remove this, cut the welds, remove this, then uh, paint some more, get it all primed up, cleaned up, kiwi grip around here to eliminate those spots. Again, we're going to do this much later when we figure out that this will work great for us. But it will, again, clean up this area and we won't have to worry about anything there. We may leave this for a while. Um, uh, I don't know how long it's going to take before we really get 100% sure that that's the right way to do it. But those holes on the side will be easy to fill and we can get access from the backside, so that's not a big deal. Join us in our next episode where we take a look inside our head as well as go over the composting toilet we've just finished. I give a proper wash down to Elements after she's gotten extremely dirty from all the projects we've been doing. And to celebrate the opening of our shop online, we're doing a giveaway with some of our new swag.